Hi, good evening. Thank you for joining Montgomery County Parks for tonight's presentation and question and answer session. The purpose of this meeting is to explore the feasibility and concept planning for developing a dog park in Bethesda at Norwood Local Park. We are seeking your input and ideas about this project before making a decision to move forward with the project. My name is Christy Kabadi and I'm the project manager and main point of contact for this dog park study. I'm a landscape architect in the park, plan, park development division at Montgomery Parks and I'm joined this evening by Suzanne Paul, our park planner from the park planning and stewardship division. Suzanne's been instrumental in studying dog parks throughout the county and developing the site suitability study for dog parks. She will be talking with you about the study this evening. Our Deputy Director of Parks, Mitty Figueredo, is also listening in on the call so she can hear your comments and concerns. This meeting is being recorded. You will be able to access the recording through the same link you used to join us tonight and at the project website. Feel free to refer to it later and review any information you'd like to see again. We hope you will participate in tonight's discussion by posting questions and comments that we will address at the end of the meeting. You can post questions at any time during the presentation using the box at the upper right of your screen. Click on the question mark to open the box. Please note there might be a slight delay from the time you send your question to when it appears in the Q&A box as we need to manually, manually post each question or comment. Information about the progress of the project will be updated on our Norwood project website, and we hope you will visit the Open Town Hall Forum where you can post additional comments and questions. Please make a note of these websites. We will also post the information in the question and answer box and show it on the screen again at the end of the presentation. You may also call or email me directly with additional questions and comments. And right now in the time of COVID, it's probably easiest to get me by email. We have posted a link to a sign-in sheet in the Q&A box, so if you would like to be notified of further project updates, please sign in and provide your contact information. We're really glad you're here to learn more about the background and concept planning for this new dog park at Norwood, and we welcome your feedback. Tonight, we'll talk with you about the project scope, the Montgomery County Dog Park Site Suitability Study, the location study within Norwood Park, and a preliminary dog park concept plan with proposed amenities. This presentation will be followed by a question and answer period. We look forward to hearing your input and ideas as we explore the feasibility and planning for this new amenity. We've already received numerous questions and comments prior to this meeting and we'll try to address them throughout our presentation. As you know, Norwood Local Park is a large, well-used and well-loved park located in a densifying urban area close to the Bethesda Central Business District. Norwood boasts 17 acres of parkland and is the largest developed park in the downtown Bethesda area. This map shows the distribution of surrounding housing types and the park's proximity to the Bethesda Central Business District. The park is bordered to the north by multifamily residential housing and townhomes and to the south by single family residential housing. As you can see from the density shown here, the park serves a considerable neighboring population, many of whom have dogs and could walk to the new dog park. At this point, I'd like to introduce Suzanne Paul, who will talk with you about the site suitability study for dog parks in Montgomery County. Thanks, Christy, and good evening, everyone. I'm Suzanne Paul from the Park Planning Team in the Park Planning and Stewardship Division. The following slides provide an overview of the suitability study for dog parks project. Over the last several years, MNCPPC Montgomery Parks has undertaken an extensive suitability study for dog parks. The following slides that I'll go through tonight outline the background, the framework, methodology, and process of that analysis and help explain why we are here this evening talking about the idea of a dog park facility at Norwood Park. Here are some of the major takeaways from the site suitability study. MNC PPC Montgomery Parks recognizes that the county needs more sanctioned off-leash dog park facilities, particularly in areas of higher residential density. There are already dogs off-leash all over our parks, on athletic fields, in tennis courts, at park school fields where we heard that school principals pick up dog waste before the school day begins, on trails, and even in some places off-leash inside fenced playgrounds. The purpose of the suitability study project was to identify a list of suitable 
sites or locations for potential future dog park facilities. The parks recommended in this study are the parks that met the evaluation criteria, improved geographic distribution, and received favorable input from the public and numerous divisions within the parks department, including park police and park managers. The parks recommended in the study are not guaranteed to move forward for planning and design of a facility. This list is meant to serve as a reference tool for future park design and development projects. Any parks on the recommendations list that move forward for concept planning will go through public meetings and opportunities for additional public input. And this is why we are here this evening. We fully recognize that county residents have polar opposite opinions about dogs, dogs in parks, and dog parks. We are here this evening to explain why Norwood is under consideration and gather your feedback on this idea. Dog park interest is on the rise, both here in Montgomery County and nationally, particularly in higher density areas. Many studies and articles discuss the important role that dog ownership and dog parks play in placemaking and in improving physical, social, and mental health. Park and trail planning facility studies are often initiated from the analyses and guidance of our state mandated and planning board approved parks, recreation, and open space or pros plans, which we write every five years. For almost a decade, the pros plan has indicated a need for more dog parks in Montgomery County. As a general principle, pros states that areas with more people should receive more facilities and areas with fewer people should receive fewer facilities. We use a geography called pros service areas to first determine demand and need for these facilities. Pros recommends 25 dog parks by 2030. The first step in this project before we review any actual park sites for suitability is to determine the demand and the need for additional facilities in each pros service area. To do this, we start by calculating the percentage of county population in each pros service area. Then, using those population percentages and the pros recommendation of 25 dog parks by 2030, we calculate what percentage of the total 25 facilities in each pros service area demands. Next, we factor in the existing supply of publicly owned and accessible dog parks in the county, and this indicates the estimated need in each pros service area. These estimates from pros give us a target for planning and recommending the number and location of new dog parks in the county. This is not a perfect science, but it gives us a logical framework for planning and distribution of facilities. This slide shows a process diagram for evaluation, for sorry, the evaluation methodology. The general idea is that we started with a long list of parks and we narrowed them down to a shorter list of parks suitable for a new dog park facility. To create the study area for this project, we selected zones in the zoning code that represent residential density and applied a half mile buffer to those zones. This lighter orange shape is our study area. We use many layers in our geographic information systems or GIS to evaluate constraints on parkland. This is a list of the layers in the resource atlas tool, and these are some of the many pieces of information we use to assess site suitability. This slide shows the ideal general program of requirements that we use for dog park facilities. Depending on the site, dog parks can vary in size and extent of additional features like shading, lighting, and seating. This is the evaluation criteria used to assess, assess parks in the initial list and narrow that list down to a refined list of suitable sites. We look for approximately 10,000 square feet of unconstrained land, so available space, distance from playgrounds. We don't wanna build dog parks directly adjacent to playgrounds to minimize conflict between dogs and young children, even if those dogs are on their leash. We look at distance from residences to minimize noise, and we look at access to the facility. 
the parks recommended in this study are envisioned as walk to dog parks. So we look at walkability as well as parking, depending on the park location. And then lastly, we look at SEPTED, which stands for Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. We want the facility to be visible, accessible, and safe. Using GIS, we went park by park to evaluate physical suitability according to the evaluation criteria and narrowed down the list, the initial list, into a shorter refined list. We met with each park management team to review the refined list of sites in their region. Park managers provided feedback using their day-to-day -day knowledge of the parks in their region and their experience managing dog parks. We also met with staff from other divisions to review the list of sites and get additional information about the parks and any current conflicts or pending projects. We narrowed down the sites on the list to create a shorter candidate list. Next, public affairs and community partnership staff employed numerous methods for public outreach, including physical signs in the current MNC PPC dog parks, email blasts to homeowners association listservs, social media posts, posting on patch.com community pages, the source of the spring, the connection newspapers, the Montgomery County Office of Public Information newsletter called the paperless airplane, nextdoor.com neighborhood listservs, we did direct outreach at community events, and I participated in a County Cable Montgomery interview for their Parks Rec and Roll program, along with Council Member Andrew Friedson. And we maintained a project email, which provided insight into the range of opinions and feelings about dogs and dog parks. To seek input on candidate sites, we organized the sites using the Regional Services Center geographies. For our outreach via Open Town Hall, I presented to Regional Services Center's Citizens Advisory Boards about the project and provided information on how residents could provide feedback on the project. We created Open Town Hall pages with map graphics like you see on this slide for each region and the public was encouraged to go to their region's page to vote for their top two preferred sites. Community members also emailed the project email address with additional thoughts or concerns about specific parks and the project in general. This slide shows the results from the Open Town Hall survey from the Bethesda Regional Services Center geography. So candidate sites that met the physical evaluation criteria, received favorable input from park managers, received favorable input from the public, and improved geographic distribution moved forward first into recommendations. These are our recommended sites. As I mentioned earlier, the parks on the list of recommendations are not guaranteed to move forward for planning and design of a facility, but this list is simply to serve as guidance and a reference tool for future park design and development projects. If a park on the recommendations list did move forward toward implementation, there would be additional opportunities for public input, like this meeting we're having this evening. Of the five recommended sites in the Bethesda Chevy Chase service area, Elm Street Park and Norwood Park were the top two preferred sites on the Open Town Hall Forum. The priority for the Bethesda Chevy Chase area was first to locate a facility as close as possible to downtown Bethesda to be in close walking distance to as many residents as possible. Norwood was chosen first by the department because it is an unusually large park within a densely populated area it will allow for adequate space to buffer the dog park from residences, and there are a lot of people with dogs already using the park for this purpose. This facility would provide a legitimate place within the park for dogs off leash and help reduce conflicts between existing users and provide opportunities for social interaction. While Elm Street Park is closer to downtown Bethesda, any facility built at Elm Street Park would be much smaller and that site will have future physical impacts created by the Purple Line and Capitol Crescent Trail construction. We received suggestions to locate the dog park at Little Falls Park, either within the park or the parking area. As you can see from this map, 
This site was not considered because there's not adequate space within the park area itself. The park already includes an athletic field and a playground. The remaining open space is sloping, not large enough, and is too close to nearby residences. While the parking lot could be a good location for a small facility, the lot currently serves as trailhead parking and overflow parking for the Bethesda pool. We hope these slides help provide more background on the selection of Norwood for a possible dog park. And now I will turn it back to Christy to talk more about the specifics of the proposed dog park design at Norwood Park. Thanks, Suzanne. That was great information. Um, now I'd like to talk about our site analysis within Norwood Park and the concept plans for the dog park itself. Um, this image shows a bird's eye view of Norwood Local Park in its current configuration. As I mentioned earlier, the park encompasses 17 acres and features valuable open space. We know this open space is precious to the surrounding neighbors as well as visiting park users. It's valuable and unusual asset in this kind of urban environment. Existing park amenities include the Norwood Recreation Center, athletic fields, courts, unprogrammed open space, two playgrounds, and a trail connection to the Little Falls Trail and Capitol Crescent Trail. The Capitol Crescent Trail and Little Falls Trail connector offer direct bicycle and pedestrian access to downtown Bethesda. We understand this is a very busy park with many activities already taking place. But according to our findings, it's also a desirable location for a new dog park amenity that will serve the community. In announcing tonight's meeting, we received numerous comments about the intensive park usage at Norwood and concern for an additional amenity that may increase park usage and demand for parking. Please rest assured that we have heard these comments and are aware of the existing pressure on the parking lots and surrounding communities at Norwood. While parking improvements are not part of the dog park project and budget, We'll get to the project budget in a few minutes. Uh, we do have an upcoming project for improvements to the park activity building, and we plan to include upgrades to the parking lot with that project. I'll explain the placement of the dog park area shortly, but for now it's noted on the image as a dashed orange shape. Please also note the red circle shows the location of the park activity building, which anchors the park and has a rich history. You are likely aware of the very interesting history of the building and park, but in case you're not, I wanted to talk briefly about the background of this park. This map shows the experimental station in Bethesda that housed the United States Bureau of Animal Industry and served as a living laboratory for investigations into communicable diseases among livestock from 1899 to 1936. The laboratory building, circled in red, is the Norwood Recreation Building, also known as the Park Activity Building, and looked almost identical to how it looks today. The experimental station farm was originally 50 acres. The area bordered in green was transferred to Montgomery Parks in 1936 and remains the current footprint of Norwood Park. This park plan from 1944 shows the park development in the years after the property transfer to MNCPPC. You can see that the park layout is similar to existing conditions but contained additional buildings and formal walks. Again, the Norwood Recreation Building is circled in red for reference and the dog park area is shown in orange. Now back to present day and the study of a dog park at Norwood. The scope of this project envisions a small urban scale dog park that will include a new fenced exercise area for dogs and will have a small dog section for moderate energy play and a large dog section for more active play. Pathways to and within the dog park will be accessible to people with disabilities and stormwater management will also be part of the project to ensure proper drainage for the dog park area. While it may appear that a dog park could go anywhere in the unprogrammed areas at Norwood, we carefully considered several factors before identifying a location for the dog park. Some of the most important considerations include maximizing distance from adjacent residences on all sides of the park, maintaining offsets from playgrounds, preserving as much open space and sport field area as possible, avoiding steep slopes and impact to trees, and providing accessible routes to the dog park. This diagram illustrates some of the key factors influencing the location of the dog park. The viable dog area is circled in the orange dashed line. Sports fields are circled in light green and the tot lot offset is the dashed green line. Steep slopes in the park are represented by the hatched areas. We also considered preserving large treed areas in the park. 
Great dog parks have some basic features in common that make the experience safe and comfortable for both dogs and their people. Fencing is, of course, a primary feature of a dog park. A surface friendly to dog feet, durable and maintainable is important. Other nice to have dog park features include small and large dog areas, seating for people, shade, and a water source for both drinking and maintenance. Keeping in mind our basic requirements and the factors that influence location of the dog park, we developed a working concept plan. The plan includes a dog exercise area with dedicated spaces for small and large dogs, a shade shelter, water source, accessible pathway to and within the dog park on a site with minimal impact to existing trees and topography. There's a 50 foot offset from the playground and a 130 foot offset to the closest property line. Please note there's additional distance to adjacent residences beyond the property lines, as well as an existing evergreen tree buffer at the south edge of the park. ADA access to the dog park is from the parking area along the trail connection at the south border of the park. An additional entry and exit, as well as maintenance access, will be part of the fencing system. The approximate square footage of the dog park as shown is 18,000 square feet, with the large active dog area occupying 13,000 square feet and the small passive dog area occupying 5,000 square feet. For the sake of comparison, this size is slightly smaller than the dog park at Ellsworth Urban Park in Silver Spring. The intent is to create a small, walkable urban model of dog park to serve individual communities rather than create a large regional attraction. A major dog park feature is fencing. Fencing height will be a minimum of four foot six inches with a double gate entry at each entrance so that dogs and owners have a safe enclosure for leash removal and acclimation to the park. You can see how that is configured in the photo on the right. The fencing type is not yet specified, but would likely be similar to the photograph shown here. In the lead up to this meeting, we received several questions about designating off leash dog hours in the park rather than building an enclosed space. While we realize that many dog owners use the park as an off-leash area, this activity is currently prohibited in parks by the Commission's park rules and regulations for both Montgomery and Prince George's counties, as well as Montgomery County leash laws. And while we also understand the desire to let dogs run free, management of this activity would be impractical in our large park system. Montgomery Parks has chosen to designate fenced areas for off-leash dog exercise and to keep them separate from other recreation facilities. This project proposes a fence dog park similar in size and type to facilities we provide in other parks. We also received questions about the surface material for the dog park. The surface of a dog exercise area is important to the park experience and must be sustainable from a maintenance perspective, while also accommodating rough and consistent dog play and dog waste. Mulch, crushed stone, paved surfaces, and dog-specific turf rose to the top of our short list of materials during our analysis of existing dog parks in Montgomery County and beyond. The park may consist of one of these materials or a combination, and the makeup of materials will be determined as the design is refined. Shade, seating, and water make a dog park a nice place to be and help give the space a unique character. A shade shelter will likely be part of the new dog park and seating will be incorporated into the design. A water source will also be included. The dog park will be funded through the Montgomery Parks Urban Parks Elements Program, which currently funds new dog parks, skate parks, and community gardens. The goal is to build one project each year through this program. The dog park project budget is $500,000. While this may seem like a large sum, these kinds of facilities require careful planning and specific infrastructure. This budget is comparable to other recent dog park projects in the county. For next steps, after we gather community input and in consultation with parks leadership, we will decide whether or not to move forward with this project at Norwood. Our next steps will be to collect the community feedback from tonight's meeting and over the coming months from the Open Town Hall Forum. From there, we will present the feedback to parks leadership, during which time we will determine the viability of a dog park at Norwood. Please check back to the project website for updates. If you have signed in for the meeting tonight with your email address, you will also receive email updates. At this time, we would like to hear from you. We're really interested in hearing your feedback and ideas and we'll be taking questions now. Our moderators are reviewing and publishing questions in the background and we will do our best to address each one. 
If for some reason we are unable to get to your question, or if you would like to submit additional comments about the project, please post it on the Open Town Hall website. In addition, we will compile comments and notes from this meeting and post them on the project website. Now I'd like to introduce Trisha McManus, Design Section Chief in the Parks Development Division, who will be leading our question and answer session. Thanks, Christy. Um, I'm Tricia McManus with the Park Development Division. Thank you for joining us and for all of the questions and feedback that have been coming through. I've been uh, monitoring and posting some information as, as things have been coming through. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the questions, even those where we've posted information, just so that those who are just listening into the call tonight will have all of the information. So as we go through, I'll direct questions either to Christy or Suzanne, depending upon the topic, although all of us will join in to help answer the questions. So um, we'll get started um, at the top and there's a lot that's been coming in questions and comments. Um, so uh, let me find my way to the top. Um, the first questions that came in about parking that um, there was questions about you know whether we've had studies um, a demand study on the parking and thoughts about reconfiguring the parking lot and you know comments that it is inefficiently and poorly laid out and we do recognize you know the pressure of parking on at norwood park as christy mentioned so we do have a project that was has been funded for a while. Actually, we started work um, on the park activity building several years ago, but had to defer that project due to some lack of funding. But we do have the funding available now. And given we know we have this um, pressure on the parking, we are going to um, include um, improvements to the parking lot and to accessibility of the building with that project. So while we haven't gotten that kicked off yet. It is funded this fiscal year and we have a separate team of um, architects and engineers who are going to be looking at that project. So that will that will help address that problem. There were some additional questions. Um, will the parking reviews assess overflow impacts on um, other roadways? I'm I'm not sure that will be part of the study, but we'll certainly um, reach out to the community when that project starts and get your comments and, and concerns about the parking. Um, the next issue that's come up, and it's come up um, several times um, tonight, is that there is a group of people um, that use Norwood Park and support a proposal for an unfenced designated hours dog park proposal instead of a more restricted fenced in area. And I believe um, some information was sent to us, you know, before the meeting, which showed the proposal um, utilizing um, ball field areas as well as um, area near the lower playground and, you know, right next to the, the trail that leads to Little Falls area. And I did post some information here. Um, off leash activity is prohibited in uh, parks by the by county commission rules, as well as there are um, leash laws uh, for Montgomery County as well. So we have in the past received requests for um, off leash areas in some of our other parks, but given the size of our park system of 424 parks, I mean, this is the management of those kinds of areas would be impractical. And what we have chosen to do as a park system is to provide um, fenced in areas that are designated for um, for off leash areas. And so while you know there may be a desire for utilizing a broader area of the park, this project is just limited to uh, a dog park area that is similar to what we provide in our other parks. So, I mean, that's the proposal at hand that we would really like your feedback for. Um, the next question that we have are, um, it sounds like this is a done deal, although you say studies and plans are still to come. And I think as, um, as Christy explained, that this isn't a done deal. We're here to get feedback from you and this is we're still exploring the feasibility of this if you know this is something we want to we want 
all of your feedback tonight. We want to get your feedback from the open town hall survey. So please, um, please, please go and fill out that survey. There's some questions like, do you want a dog park here or not? And why or why not? There's open ended questions that will allow you to post any comments that you have, as well as, you know, particular features you'd like to see um, associated with a dog park. So please, you know, give us your feedback. We want to get as much as much feedback as we can and we will assess all of that and 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 make some decisions how we move forward based on what we hear from you. So it's not a done deal at all. So just to make that clear. Um, um, let's see. OK, there's another on parking. Um, and can we provide a follow up on that design? And we will have public meetings for that project, so you'll be able to comment on what's what would be proposed at that point. Um, and then there was a question about um, the site suitability study. When did the Norwood proposal receive favorable input from the public? And we did have, as Suzanne explained, I don't. Suzanne, would you like to answer this question? Um, you know about the outreach that you did for the um, suitability study for Bethesda. Sure. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, let's see. I met with the regional services centers. I believe it was the fall of 2018 into the you know late winter, early spring of 2019. Um, this project went in front of the planning board in June of 2019. So. Um, that was around the time that we started contacting people about this project and um, I'm not sure if the person who asked the question uh, saw the slide, but we did uh, use a variety of different and get the word out and um, get communities talking about this idea. And it was a, a countywide study that, you know, focused on a, a specific study area, but um, we got the most participation from the Bethesda area. So there was the most enthusiasm there, but that, that's around the time that we initiated that um, input request. OK, thanks, Suzanne. Um, the next question was um, asking whether we would consider allowing the current situation of dogs um, being off leash in the park. And why would we spend more money in a year when there's a huge budget deficit? And I, I guess I'd like to point out, we know there's a great demand for dog parks in, in the county and especially in the Bethesda area and areas of high population. We do have funding. The county council has given us funding every year to for in our urban park elements program specifically to um, in, provide dog parks, skate parks, and community gardens. And so Bethesda is one of our, as you saw in Suzanne's um, slide, a very high demand area. It's one area of the county that doesn't have a dog park yet. So um, that we have the money already, and this is an area of, of the county that needs it. So that's why we're, we're proposing a project here. Um, the next question would, is would there be an intention to increase enforcement of the leash regulations if the project did move forward and and saying that there's a substantial volume of off leash activity already as well as um, a lot of dogs gathering in the park and actually i mean that is one of the reasons we think that this dog park would be successful here is that there is a lot of off leash activity and what you know, the feedback that we heard before the meeting is not everybody likes that off leash activity. There's conflicts between users. And so, I mean, providing a fenced area would provide a place for people to go and to and and for that activity. So um, we think that th this probably is very much needed based on the volume of um, dogs that are in the park and and that off leash um, dogs are not allowed to be off leash. So, uh, you know, anybody could call our park police, you know, in terms of enforcement if there are issues and the it, park police would enforce it by 
um, providing potentially providing citations. They would, you know, they can investigate complaints and and do something about it. So we're not, um, you know, so it is against the rules to have your dogs off leash, and we're trying to provide, you know, an area that that would be a benefit and would be, you know, would would help with the issues that are going on in the park. So um, Suzanne, would you want to add anything to that? Um, I mean, I think you covered it well. Uh, we've had a lot, we've heard from a lot of people with a lot of ideas. I think um, the city of Rockville had a program that allows people to have their dog like assessed in person and granted the um, special status to be off leash in public areas and people said can you do that in Montgomery Parks and it's truly it would be an impossible task for us to monitor and administer a program like that and um, unfortunately those are those are the rules um, we have leash laws and the county has leash laws and for a variety of reasons. Um, so this is this is the the solution that is proposed. Okay, thanks, Suzanne. So I mean that this is the proposal. It's similar to what we do in our other parks. So the, you know we'd like your feedback on whether you think this is a good idea or not. And it sounds like there's a lot of different opinions about that. Um, there's a question here about. Well, there's some back and forth um, that we did go ahead and publish to a to a point between um, attendees of the meeting. But um, in terms of the parking area, I think the area that we would be studying is is not looking at taking away existing um, green areas of the park. It would be reconfiguring the parking that we have. So that would be, you know, the proposed project. And um, we have some people here saying that downtown Bethesda desperately needs a dog park. Um, yes, address the parking issue, but also address the dog park issue. Um, so there was a question also about um, we are working on um, some drainage um, is issues that have been going on with the park, and I did post there was some question about that. Um, I have posted some information. We have our park engineers are working on working with the downstream neighbors of the park to investigate how we could address, you know, some of the storm events that have been happening in the park. And so we have listed our project manager for that project, Andrew Sai, who please contact him, you know, if you have questions about the drainage issues and he can provide you more information about that project. And then here's the question about um, Little Falls Park, uh, whether we had considered that. And this question came in, I think, right when Suzanne was explaining it. So I think we did explain that that park was considered, but there is an, a desert, an active athletic field in there al along with the playground and um, limited space available um, with a parking lot that is that is currently being used for the trailhead and for the Bethesda pool. Um, there's some there's a few comments that I saw come in about um, public noticing, and um, so we did. We always do try to um, post to send the postcards uh, between two to four weeks ahead of the meeting, and I guess you know someone's saying they got their postcard in October, late October, which is. Um, which is it is our typical noticing for public meetings. Um, and I guess here's a comment about the off leash area again. Um, do we have existing dog parks in Montgomery County that would share the sighting characteristics of Norwood in terms of proximity to people's homes and a parking lot that is frequently overwhelmed? Um, and if so, can we share how those um, conflicts have been resolved. And um, Suzanne, I know you're you're familiar with the other dog parks. Um, I'm not sure we have anything exactly like Norwood. I, I know we do have two of our more recent dog parks, the one at Ellsworth 
Park and the one at um, Dewey Park are do have residences, you know, in proximity, but not, you know, they're they're bordered by residences, but um, but across the street. Um, but Suzanne, do you have? I'm not sure if we have any any parks that have really the exact similar characteristics to yeah. Norwood. <clears throat> that's a great that's a great question, and um, thanks for asking it. Uh, before we built Ellsworth Dog Park and Dewey, which just opened recently, all of our dog parks were at regional parks or recreational parks, and those are primarily drive to facilities. And so in the last two pros plans and now even the general plan for Montgomery County has a heavy, heavy emphasis on providing more facilities in uh, walking distance to as many people as possible um, to promote you know, walkability. And so the intention really for these recommendations for the suitability study was to find locations that are in close proximity. That's why the study area is these um, areas of higher residential density to make them places that many people can walk to. Um, and I would say that uh, Ellsworth doesn't really have parking. Um, there's the the old Silver Spring Library site there. Um, there really, I mean, there really isn't one exactly identical to this, but that's how a lot of our parks are. They're not all quite the same. But um, when this study was started, before I think Ellsworth was just opening and Dewey, um, I don't think had been gone through concept planning yet. Everything was at a regional park or a recreational park. Okay, thanks, Suzanne. There's the next question. Also, is um, is is relevant as well, and it's um, it it says the closeness of Norwood to downtown Bethesda depends on walking paths that are not public rights of way. Could you address you know what we thought about in terms of walkability? Short, are you asking me? <laughs> oh, oh yes, sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. Um, yeah, so I know in the Bethesda downtown plan, um, there were a number of sites identified for increasing access along the north side of Norwood Park. And I, um, I'm not closely uh, tied to the project that's happening, I think is under review right now on the north side, but there are additional um, public access points that are planned um, to come in with redevelopment of a couple of those sites on the north side. Um, so that, I mean, I think that's a big deal. And then obviously the Capitol Crescent Trail, Little Falls Trail connection along the south side is another, another walkable access point. Okay, thanks, Suzanne. Um, this question here is, did the study consult with the high volume of youth sports organizations and activities that are utilizing um, this portion of the park currently. And on an average weekend, nearly all the fields are full. And I think this question popped up um, maybe just before Christy was showing where the dog park was proposed, but we are, we're not proposing um, the location to be we very carefully selected it so it was not did not overlap any of the um, fields that are being used. Although, you know, the point that there is heavy use on the weekend um, of the of the fields and that would be parking as well. You know, that would be something that that would need to be looked at. And I think one of our questions or a couple of our questions in the open town hall are asking like when people, what times of day people would be most likely to use the dog park and on whether it's on weekdays and, and on weekends. So we'd like to gather more information in that regard so that we can better evaluate what conflicts might be happening in the park um, with different type, different activities occurring at different times of day and, and on different days of the week. So we, we would like your feedback on that, which would help us analyze that a little bit better. And then um, there's a comment here that 
you know, there are lots of dog parks in DC and Virginia that are that are on smaller sites and closer to homes and schools. So yes, there are, you know, a lot of urban areas have very small dog parks that are in, in very compacted um, spaces. Um, so that's a that's a comment. And then um, again, a comment about Little Falls Park, which I think we addressed earlier. And then a, a comment to encourage um, more handicap access to the park. There's not even um, access to the playground, which is supposed to be accessible. So I don't see how you could adequately construct ramps, especially with no dedicated handicap parking. And that is a good point. And, and um, when we are part of the study, we would be making um, any new facilities that we put into parks, we are required to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And when we are going to be looking at the park activity building and the parking, we will be designating uh, accessible parking spaces within that parking lot and also making sure that the walkway from the parking lot to the um, new dog park facility meets accessibility guidelines. So there may be some work that will need to be done on walkways and paths. And and yes, as we move forward, I think we do have this park is programmed for um, improvement, accessibility improvements. Um, I'm not sure when, where in the pipeline that is, but we do have a specific program for ADA improvements. And this park, as along with many of our other parks, um, does need to have additional improvements. So that's a good comment. Um, let's see. Um, have we incorporated any lessons learned from the Chevy Chase Village dog park? Which, um, Suzanne, I'd like you to address this because this is about proximity to homes and we know that you know, that dog park was not successful. Yeah, I'm happy to, thanks. Um, when the Chevy Chase Village dog park was covered in the Washington Post, um, we were already, you know, pretty far along with our suitability study and the um, public input, but we did, I did speak directly with the uh, town manager there and also with the town of Chevy Chase and um, their efforts to try and find a suitable site for a dog park in their community as well. And I think that um, the Chevy Chase Village example just sort of confirmed that our criteria was, um, you know, was appropriate. And um, I mean, I, I think in that case, the dog park facility was directly up against the uh, the property line and much, much closer to houses. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think that just confirmed that our criteria was uh, solid and, you know, it's helpful to talk to other jurisdictions about how they're trying to to really be mindful about where we place these facilities and um, balance the great interest and enthusiasm that people have and um, some of the trickier aspects of, of citing these facilities. Okay, thanks Suzanne. Um, Christy, the next couple questions are related to design, so I'd like to um, forward these to you. Um, the first one is, in order for seniors or disabled residents to access the pr proposed dog area, it would need to provide a pathway um, maybe by wood chips in the bumpy grass area. My recommendation is a pathway around the entire perimeter perimeter of the park. So how, how would we address accessibility for the dog area? Hey, thanks, Tricia. Um, that's a good question. And um, as Tricia mentioned earlier, it is a requirement for a new park amenity to be accessible according to ADA requirements. So. Um, we do have a plan to um, use the Little Falls um, Parkway Trail Connector to be the accessible route from the parking lot to the um, dog park itself. And then any walkway 
from there to the dog park and also walkways within the dog park will be accessible and meet accessibility standards, um, which means that the surfacing will have to meet accessibility standards um, as well as the slope. And from our initial study, that's very possible with a minimum of um, topographical change or, or anything like that. So um, we feel confident that we have a, a plan for that. Um, and I think that there was a um, comment as well as part of that about a pathway around the entire perimeter of the park. Um, we always love to include um, amenities like that. Unfortunately, it's not part of this dog park budget at, for right now. Um, but as other projects, um, including, as Tricia mentioned, a, you know, further ADA studies in the park, there may be more possibility for additional accessible pathways. Okay, thanks, Christy. And th this next one too is, um, are there other areas in the park that could be considered as alternative sites? So I know you did look, okay. you know, look throughout the park. Yeah, we did. We did really consider um, the entirety of the park and several site visits to see um, what we could do and using um, both GIS data as well as on the ground uh, conditions. This was really the um, only place the dog park could go. And in fact, I'm going to just move the slideshow back to that, um, back to this diagram, which shows the sports fields and um, other amenities in the park where we um, sort of can't encroach on those, those facilities. Um, you may notice that there are large unoccupied areas um, sort of to the, the west side of the park and the northwest of the park, um, but those are very close to residences and, and are not appropriate given our criteria. So really that area that you see circled in orange was the only place in the park that met the many criteria that we set um, and also included sort of the less least disturbance to existing treed areas and, um, and topography. Um, so uh, we realize also that um, the sports fields that are south of this dog park area are there while they're not permittable, we understand they're used heavily. So we also tried to minimize impact to those um, those areas. So thank you. OK, and th the next um, comment is um, states that although the area identified for the dog park apparently does not utilize any formal recreational areas, the area is heavily used by multiple sports activities, including soccer, volleyball, and more. So that's just a comment. And maybe Christy, could you point out that one sort of unprogrammed open field that we had initially considered um, but it just seemed too close to homes and that that was a much more usable um, unprogrammed open space. Could you just? Yeah, sure. That? Okay. Um, that's this this field right here, which is used for um, soccer practices as well as other kinds of practices. Um, and this this little bit of field right here is also used for those kinds of um, activities. And the dog park area does come a little bit into that field, but we preserved this one in its entirety. OK, thanks, Christy. And the next question is, what are the capital improvement, historic preservation and deferred maintenance needs of the park and its building? And why is a dog park superseding these needs? Actually, the dog park budget is completely separate from that project. Um, I am not as familiar with all of the um, needs of the building, but that is a separately funded project out of our park activity buildings um, program. And I know, I believe um, the roof needs to be replaced. I'm not sure what the other needs of the building are, but um, that project is separately funded and will be um, moving forward in the near future. Um, the next question is, the park is currently successfully used for multiple purposes. Dropping the fenced space in the middle of the park is problematic. Many dog owners will continue to use this area for off -le leash access. So that's just um, a comment similar to some of the other ones that we've received. Um, are you considering sports fields to encompass only the di baseball diamonds? 
Um, I think that that's a similar to the area demarcated on the map is frequently used by park users to engage in many other sporting and other leisure activities. So, um, you know, the point here is that some open space will be lost for recreation by by putting the dog park there. So that's similar to the the other two comments. And then the next question is, um, what hours would the dog park be open? And that they sometimes have issues pe with people being in the park at night. And um, this comment, they don't want lights in the park to keep their um, to, to keep people there late at night. And the hours of the dog park would be the same as the um, the park itself, which is open from dawn to dusk. So it's there we wouldn't have any plans to light this part this dog park, um, particularly because there are the park is not op this park is not open at night. Some of our parks do have lighted facilities in the parks, but such as ball fields, which are open later at night. But this park and the plan for this park would be that it's open um, from during daylight hours only, the same as the park. Um, let's see. And must the next question, must the pathways be impervious? Christy, would you like to address that one? Sure, thank you. Um, the pathways and their materials will be determined as we move into um, a phase of design development. Um, they don't have to be impervious. They do have to be accessible um, and, and meet ADA requirements. So um, that's something I would encourage you to um, write in the open town hall. We also are capturing all of these comments here tonight. So we'll be able to see your interests and um, can definitely consider that as we work through the design of the dog park, if the dog park goes forward in this location. Thanks, Christy. Um, there's a comment here about pickleball and that um, there's a great demand for painting pickleball lines um, on the tennis courts. And here's a suggestion for um, painting pickleball on two of the tennis courts. It's the fastest growing sport in the US and it would be in great demand for residents in the in immediate neighborhood. And that sounds like a, you know, we're, I know we are doing that in a lot of our parks and we do have a separate um, staff members that look at pickleball and providing some of the pickleball locations. And we will be happy to, you know, forward that comment. Um, you know, there are site selection studies going on for pickleball as well and where and where we can provide it. So um, that's that's a good comment about, you know, additional needs for the park. And then the next comment is this person and several others uh, are saying this proposal is a horror and it's ugly and um, they don't support dedicating money to build the dog park. So um, that's that's an opinion expressed. So we want to hear them all. And um, let's see, there are plenty of op other open spaces to do soccer and other sports on the lower field. So there's a opinion that, you know, there is enough space in the park for other things to occur. So, um, so I guess there are some comments here back and forth that people are, <laughs> people are talking back and forth with each other about, um, you know, the dog use in the park. And then um, another question about the fields that you know that there is non-organized activities by residents who currently utilize the area that we're proposing um, for other activities. So that's again a comment we've heard a few times that that you know these just unprogrammed open spaces are used for other activities in the park. So that's that's a valid comment. Um, and then here again is the the. A, Again, a comment we received previously about drainage, oh, drainage and runoff from the playgrounds. Um, and what makes us comfortable thinking that these problems will be addressed with a dog park. So Christy, do you, would you like to address um, our, you know, 
plans for stormwater management for the dog park area? Sure. Yeah, again, we're really in very early conceptual stages of this um, design, but um, we we have come together with our project engineers and and looked at uh, drainage for the dog park. Um, we will have to drain the dog park uh, um, of its own accord, and we do have plans um, in progress for working through that. Um, and we are hopeful that with the work that's going to be done in the park, um, along with the work for the dog park, that um, the issues will be largely resolved. That being said, we are getting some serious rain events um, over and over again. Um, and, you know, that's a, a larger issue. Um, but we are looking at, um, at the dog park as a specific drainage area and we'll be addressing drainage concerns Okay, thanks, Christy. And here's a comment again um, about, you know, the. It seems we're not aware that it's just the ball fields that are used, but other open green space, including the area where we're placing the dog park. So, um, another comment, just that that area is used for other other things. And then a question: Are we aware that there's a preschool behind the activity center? And yes, we are aware of that. Um, the next question is what needs to be done to change the the uh, leash laws? Um, and I think that's beyond the scope of this project. I mean, we're not lawyers. We're um, that's a commission and county um, issue. I think that's I, I, I don't know the answer to that, but it's not something that we would be undertaking uh, at all. And as part of this project, um, the Montgomery Parks all of our um, dog exercise areas are on leash, or, or I mean, our, all the off leash areas are fenced, and that's what we are proposing for this park and for the other parks in the county. Um, here's a question. Here's a good question. Do we have a photo of a comparable 18,000 square foot facility with a four and a half foot chain link fence so we can visualize it? And we do if if I think our most comparable dog park would be um, Ellsworth Dog Park in Silver Spring. That's about 20,000 square feet, so it's a little bit bigger, but it does have the four and a half foot height. Um, and yeah, Christy's going back to that slide that shows the fencing, or you had some images of the fencing. But so this would be a little bit smaller than um, Ellsworth, but um, just to visualize the size of this area, um, two tennis courts together are between about 14,000 and 15,000 um, square feet. So it would be a little bit bigger than a two, two tennis courts. Um, so I think if you look at um, Ellsworth Dog Park and Dewey Local Park, um, that's um, off Randolph Road, near Veers Mill Road. That those are our two most two recently built dog parks. I think the one at Dewey was um, 22,000 square feet, so it's a little bit bigger, but Ellsworth is a little smaller. So those would be examples of roughly the size and the type of amenities that we would be proposing here. Um, and Tricia, if I could just jump in for one second. Um, this slide, the slide that I have up right now, the bottom right is the uh, Ellsworth Dog Park that Trisha just mentioned, and um, the top right is a dog park in DC. And it's I'm not remembering which one it is right now. I apologize for that. But um, as you can see in those two photographs, it doesn't have to look industrial looking. And I understand your concern about that because if you think about chain link fencing, it does sound um, austere. But there are lots of ways to make it an inviting space. And I think, you know, one of the things that we really recognize about Norwood is the beauty of the park and the bucolic nature of the park. And we would strive to make sure that the dog park fit into the aesthetic of that park. Okay, thanks, Christy. Um, this next comment is um, that downtown Bethesda could use multiple dog parks. And with Norwood being one of the biggest parks, it seems like a great place to start. So um, 
as a large dog owner, having a dog park accessible is definitely preferable to letting my dog run around in an open field. Um, so there's a comment there. Um, a comment about, um, and that's going back to the drainage, which I think we did address. Um, and a comment here that, you know, Norwood look, you know, Norwood has 17 acres, so there's room for everybody. Um, dogs, parks, you know, are beneficial to humans as well. And um, so there's some back and forth between people <laughs> about, um, you know, their their opinions, which is fine. And um, and here's a question saying that, you know, there was not adequate prior community involvement and we seem to have made up our mind, which I don't think that's the case. Um, so, you know, we're here to, he to hear what you have to say. Here's a question about acoustic study. Um, so, Suzanne, I, I don't think we've done any acoustic studies. Um, it's saying there's no place in Norwood Park that could avoid noise bothering the residents. Could you again address, you know, what our criteria were for distance from residences and, and why? Sure. We looked at a couple other um, jurisdictions and who used a distance of 100 to 200 feet um, and looking at skate park studies, skateboarding creates a lot of noise um, as well. And so, I mean, I think that the, we found that this location provided the greatest kind of combination of um, feasible elements while providing that distance off the um, off the property line. But there is not a standard, at least to our knowledge, in dog park construction. There are dog parks built in a variety of locations, um, but we wanted to try and provide the maximum feasible distance for that reason. Um, I hope that helps answer the question. OK, thanks, Suzanne. Um, this next one is, would the improvements create additional parking spaces? And yes, that would be the intent. I think an initial, we haven't studied it yet, but we do think that parking lot that's out there right now behind the park activity building is very inefficiently laid out. And we think that with some restriping and reconfiguration, we could we could definitely gain additional parking spaces. So that would be the intent of that. Um, how many we don't know yet till we study it. Um, so here's another comment that some dog owners who requested the off leash area also support the dog park. Um, and then can why can't we be specific about surfaces and provision? for parking um, that that we recognize this will draw additional traffic to the park. Um, I think what we are realizing is that even before we've we've put a new facility here that there the the there already is pressure on the parking in the park. So that that is really what we're trying to why we've you know, we're trying to address this issue. And the reason we can't be specific yet is that we haven't done any design on it yet. So that would be the project that we would begin, you know, early in the new year. Um, and that way we, you know, we would have some concepts and some ideas about specifically what we could do to um, improve the parking area. Um, here's one for Christy, which is how large is the large dog area? And will it be sufficient for multiple large dogs to run and play fetch? These dogs need a lot of space to run and shouldn't feel forced to socialize with other dogs if they don't want to. OK, thanks, Tricia. Um, the large dog area is 15,000 square feet. Um, it should be sufficient for lar multiple large dogs to be using the space and not be on top of each other. Um, this is actually a good size dog park design. And I think as we've mentioned a couple times tonight, it's very similar to the park at um, Ellsworth. 
And so if you take a look at that park, um, you will get an idea for the size of the spaces. And I would recommend if you have concerns about that to to drive by there or go look at it or take your dog there and um, see how you feel about it and let us know because now is the time we are we really are listening and we want to hear your thoughts and we want this to be the best facility possible for the Bethesda area. Thanks Christy there's another there's another question about um, timing so assuming that this is approved what would be the likely timing? Could you address that? Sure. Um, so the next steps, I think, as I mentioned before, are to um, collect feedback, and we're going to be doing that through the end of this calendar year. Um, so we'll be taking your comments through Open Town Hall and through tonight's meeting until um, December 31st, at which point we'll start to go through all the comments. I mean, we'll be doing that in the meantime as well, but um, we'll put together a presentation for parks leadership so that there can be a clear understanding of um, the community input and um, interest in a park in this area. Um, and then if that is approved, from there we'll start to move forward um, with design and implementation, which um, would probably take about a year. OK, thanks, Christy. Um, there's questions about um, Suzanne, I think you addressed this in your presentation, but um, are there other locations in Norwood? Oh, we we addressed, you know, locations in Norwood or or nearby parks being considered. Sure. Um, the other parks on the list for this immediate area included Elm Street Urban Park and Willard Avenue, which is really in Friendship Heights. Um, but I think, you know, as we said earlier, the priority, since we perceive that there to be this great need and demand for um, the downtown Bethesda area, the priority is to really choose a location that is in close proximity to downtown Bethesda. And we feel that Norwood has um, the most going for it as the first site to build. And I would just say, like, you know, if it were possible and we could um, build the the dog parks that are, you know, we perceive that are needed, they wouldn't all be identical in size. There might be, you know, smaller ones here and there and then larger ones here and there. So. OK, thanks, Suzanne. Um, and. Is there a study on the amount of current park usage? I'm not aware of any any such thing existing, um, so I, I'm not some I'm not aware of that. But it's something we could look into. And then um, another question about the off leash concept, which we're not considering at this point. Um, I'm realizing we have um, 230 questions, and I'm I'm not sure how far we are through them. So I I do want to make sure we get to kind of new issues that we haven't discussed. Um, so this comment is saying that the enclosure appears to be in a very heavily used area of the open area, that it's a location of an annual 4th of July celebration. So that's that's a comment that we should be aware of. And um, and again, some support for um, for walkable, um, there's a lot of walkable development and, and apartments coming in Bethesda and people have dogs and need a place to go. Um, so uh, here's a question about the size of Cabin John Dog Park. That's about an acre. So that's, that's um, you know, some of our larger regional and park dog parks are meant to be destinations that people drive to. Um, and that is one of our larger ones, which is about an acre in size. So that's an acre is about 43,000 square feet. And then um, another question on drainage. Um, um, something about dog, dogs on, on school fields. 
Um, yeah, and here's a question again. The open spaces are key to preserve. Um, what's the intent that this will serve the immediate neighborhood or all of Bethesda? And um, I think this is just one of others, I think, as Suzanne pointed out, that would, you know, ultimately serve the Bethesda area. But it's it's a it's a walkable park to a lot of um, residences. So um, here's people who would love the dog park and would prefer going here than rather than driving to Cabin John. Um, again, the question about the funding, which we we have address that we do have the funding already available for this purpose. Um, yes, we will make, here's a question about making transparency that we need to make all feedback public. We absolutely will. We intend to tonight write up um, minutes of this meeting, which we will post on our um, project webpage. And in addition, and the Open Town Hall forum will be fully available for everybody to see those, that feedback. And in addition, I think given the number of questions that we're getting and the number of repeated questions about issues, I think we will probably look at developing sort of a frequently asked questions um, uh, you know, page that we would also post on our web page. So we fully intend to make all of our all of all of the comments that we've received public. Um, how do we find the open town hall survey? There was a link. Oh, and oh, OK, the link was added there and it was at the beginning of the um, Q&A as well. And that's another question about. Um, about Cabin John, the question about the budget, um, the while it seems like a lot of money, that is what these um, facilities are costing and they're consistent with other, you know, similar size facilities we've built recently. Um, how is the park department considering spending money on maintenance? Um, that's that's something that's not the scope of this project. I'm I, you know, this is about a capital project. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I don't have the answer to that. Um, so here's a comment that there are enough favorable people to make it to make this a, a proposal to move forward. Um, again, uh, comments about the budget. I think the dog park will work fine. Um, it's people in support, I think um, there's a lot many comments and um, please you know enough more comments and support and that people should read the background information um, and here's a question does a survey require people to say how close they live to the dog park yes um, that is one of the questions on it it's it's how close do you live to the dog park or how close do you live to the park um, do you, how do you get to the park? Do you walk? Do you drive? Do you use a bike? And how often do you use the park? Like every day, you know, a couple times a week. So those questions are all in the survey as well. And they do record the zip codes of people who are responding um, on the back end. So we can see where people, where the comments are coming from. And then um, uh, question, just more, more comments. Um, timing, which I think we addressed. Um, and then this, um, the location of the area cuts off the much used path between the two playgrounds. So um, with this alteration, you know, we're, we're, we're damaging that aspect of the park. So maybe that's something we can look at um, just to make sure there is, we're leaving you know, room to walk around the dog park and get to the other areas of the park. So that's a good comment that I think we can look at in the design. Yeah, I'll just jump in there real quick, Tricia. We we did um, we did take into consideration um, circulation through the park and the location of the dog park. 
Um, I know we're all looking at this plan that sort of zoomed in on the dog park and we're not seeing the larger park area, but um, you could on this plan walk f around the left side of the dog park to, to rejoin that path to the playground. OK, thanks. I'm just scrolling through now to just try to get to questions maybe we haven't addressed since we're, you know, it's close to 830 now, but um, let's keep going and see if there's, you know, new issues that that really haven't um, been addressed. But there's a lot of comments for comments against. There's comments about, um, you know, that area of the park is already used. Um, um, so Trisha, while you're um, scrolling okay. through, I'm just going to put up this um, slide of the bird's eye view of Norwood Park um, so that you can see again the location of the dog park within the park. Um, I am interested to hear about the 4th of July celebration and exactly where that might take place um, so that you know we can try our best to accommodate whatever uses are happening already in the park. Um, so we really did think a lot about the um, the open nature of the park and the green spaces and the areas that people use. Um, we have been as a team to the park multiple times to assess trees, to um, look at topography, to um, observe um, park usage. And I understand that we're in a strange time right now with COVID, um, but you know we really did consider these things and um, we also value that aspect of the park. Um, but at the same time, we felt that this park could accommodate in its 17 acres another amenity. Um, Christy, there's a couple of other design questions I'm going to float your way. Um, do you have an estimate of how many dogs could be in either section of the proposed park? Just there's concern that it's so much smaller than Cabin John. You know, how, how many dogs could could be accommodated in that site in that area and then a second question design question um, about could we could we still consider other locations within Norwood Park and um, one question was closer to the tennis courts or on other peripheral areas but I know those are closer to residences but if you could um, you could address those two um, thoughts. OK, Trisha, can you tell me quickly the first one again? The first one was how many dogs? Oh, how many dogs? Fit right. Any section okay. of the park. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I don't have an exact answer to that. Um, the park is adequate to fit a large number of dogs. Um, so we've also studied examples from um, from DC in particular where the dog parks are tiny and can accommodate, um, you know, multiple dogs. Um, and I, I think that this park is going to be able to accommodate a, a good number of dogs. Again, I point to the example of Ellsworth. Um, if you look at Ellsworth on a busy day, there are quite a few dogs there. And um, while this park is slightly smaller, it's of comparable size. Um, if, it's, if it's important to know how many dogs, we could probably figure out um, exactly, or not exactly, but you know, approximately what that might be. Um, but I'd have to get back to you on that. Um, and then the second one about um, considering alternate locations in the park. Um, as I mentioned, we have been out there many times to look at the on the ground conditions as well as um, using GIS data to analyze different parts of the park. Um, one of the challenging things about a dog park is that it, it really works best if it's flat. And um, in order to, um, to retain the character of the park, and accommodated dog park, it's best for us not to do too much topographical change. So this location is actually one of the flatter locations in the park um, that meets all of the other criteria um, of distance to residences, um, et cetera. So we could look again and, um, and take another look at where it's located, but we've been through a pretty extensive process to locate it in this spot. And there's also a question, Christy, about why can't we make it bigger? <laughs> um, OK, well, that's a great question. We have looked at all kinds of different designs for this park, um, including larger designs. Um, at this point, given the um, 
the physical requirements of the site as well as our budget, this size makes the most sense. And because it's intended to be an urban scale walk to dog park rather than sort of a regional attraction, um, this size uh, really uh, um, meets those requirements as well. OK, thanks. Um, there's a question about. Um, let's see. About again, Little Falls, has there been a study of how much how how much it's used versus Norwood, um, but we do know that park, you know, there just isn't space within the park without taking over other facilities. So, um, you know, we I think we addressed we addressed that. Um, answer the question about whether it's been there's been a study of overall park us usage. I think I said before I wasn't aware of one, but we will look into that and um, and see if there there is anything we have any information on that. Um, let's see. Um, let me see if there's questions. A lot of people missed the links to the survey, which um, the, the open town hall survey or the maybe it was the dog park site selection study. Um, um, let's see. Again, budget questions, budget usage, um, more comments than questions. Um, um, have we considered the use by, you know, B BCC High School? Um, um, OK, here's a here's a comment that all the Photos we post show dogs and children playing on grassy lawns without leashes. Um, so not very honest advertising. I think the park, the the photos we've been showing are in dog parks. Is that correct, Christy? That's correct. I think ev almost every photo we have in there is has a dog park um, and shows a dog park fence. There may be some close ups of dogs romping that um, that don't show the fence, um, but we are intending it to be a fenced area. But I will take this opportunity to talk about um, to talk about natural turf or lawn and the fact that um, it is not a good dog park surface because um, it gets compacted and is not maintainable in the long term. So that's a surface we would not be uh, considering using. We would look at um, a specific dog turf or stone dust or mulch as the the dog specific um, surfaces. OK, um, here's a question, Suzanne, um, that's saying where exactly are the public access points to the park? Living in Kenwood Forest too, we are the only access point to the park from Bethesda. This will lead to unwanted traffic in and out of the neighborhood. Are you, are you talking about the vehicular access points or the? I'm not sure whether pedestrian? that question, it doesn't say specifically, but I'm assuming it was pedestrian, but. Um, yeah, I don't know if we if we don't know, we. We can. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the um, I guess the pedestrian access points coming off the Little Falls Trail connection um, and then coming in um, over to the east, kind of the main road, the road connections and that uh, cars use as well. But uh, we know that we need more pedestrian access points to the park, particularly on the north side. Um, and that's, those are one of the major recommendations um, in the parks, trails and open space section of the Bethesda downtown plan. I actually believe um, there is the potential and um, for you know private development to be providing a through block crossing yes. at the yeah. north area of the park that would provide access to the sidewalks um, into the park on on that side of the park. I, I believe there's private development proposing you know that connection. Yes. Okay. 
Um, let's see, do we have data on dog ownership in the county? Um, I'm happy I'm to sure. okay. talk about that. Yeah, I mean, okay. that, that data is really unreliable. We certainly looked at that really early on in the suitability study. It's like, you know, of course, we'd love to know exactly how many dogs they, there are in the county, but people don't always, um, you know, get their dog um, registered. And um, those numbers are hard to capture, and we didn't want to base our study on um, that kind of unreliable information. But there, there are um, studies in the, in the, uh, in the field that say anywhere from 30 to 40 percent or more house of households in the United States uh, have dogs. Okay, thanks Suzanne. Here's a comment I just would like to address. Um, it's saying how piecemeal the various projects for the park are that we're working for the dog on the dog park separately from dealing with the building and then accessibility and Yes, I, I, you know, we, we actually are funding a lot of our projects these days with when we have limited funding through our smaller level of effort programs. So um, we don't have the funding available that we used to to do larger, you know, whole park renovation projects. So we are um, taking an approach to um, upgrade to do less costly upgrades to parks. But in this case, like when we see that there are issues or, or, or concerns with um, one certain areas of the park, we do try to combine efforts and make sure those those um, those we're, we're taking care of more than just, for example, with the with the dog park, you know, this this um, concern about the parking came up really right away. And so that's something we have money in our parking lots program that we can, we're able to consolidate with the building project and then try to get a better and more comprehensive renovation. So we we do our best with the funding that we have. And when we do go into a an existing park, we do try to look, you know, beyond the small project that we're funded for to see if there's a way that we can um, pool other resources together to try to make a better park improvement. Um, so I'm I'm just going to scroll um, quickly because I think we are. There's a lot of comments, not not questions, and actually we will be able to post. Um, we will be able to to download all of the comments from the Q&A and, and maybe we'll literally um, post those as well so people see the the, the actual that come through, especially since, you know, it doesn't look like we're going to have time to go, go through all of these. I'm scrolling down and it looks like I'm only about halfway down. So Trisha, um, while you're scrolling, maybe for a second, I'll address uh, um, several comments that came in all together about okay. the amphitheater. OK, great. Um, the amphitheater, the space between the dog park and the amphitheater was also carefully studied um, to make sure that events at the amphitheater could still accommodate an adequate audience on the, the sloped area. And um, as I mentioned before, a dog park is not ideal on a sloped area, and so the um, the bowl, for lack of a better word, that is the the audience viewing area for the amphitheater was not considered as a location for the dog park. So, um, you know, maps can be deceiving and they're hard to look at um, in terms of scale. So, um, you know, we really did consider a lot of these offsets and distances from from different elements of the park. OK, thanks, Christy. Um, I am not seeing a lot of I'm seeing a lot of um, you know tagging on to um, other comments that we've previously gone through. So I I think um, uh, they're saying here do we have in 
do we have information on how many dogs are using um, Ellsworth compared to the number of dogs we project to be using at Norwood? Um, Suzanne, I don't, do we have data on how many dogs um, are using the parks at any, using these facilities? We don't have counts. Um, I think right after uh, the Ellsworth Dog Park opened, we did put up some um, cameras to like, you know, see, try and ca capture usage in that first weekend. Um, but I, I'm, I really apologize. I don't have those numbers off the top of my head. We can certainly provide them. Um, that area, I, I believe when Ellsworth was built, that area was the, considered heavily underserved as well. I mean, it's directly adjacent to downtown Silver Spring, which is truly our highest residential density area in many ways. Um, but we can certainly get those numbers and take a look and kind of help estimate it. Okay, thanks, Suzanne. I think, you know, we are, we do need to be mindful of people's time and, and wrap it up, but I, and I'm not seeing a lot, you know, there's a lot of comments, not a lot of new questions. So I, I, I we really appreciate all the feedback that we've gotten tonight and, um, I think that what we will do is we'll we'll download all of this information. We'll we'll prepare minutes of tonight's meetings. We'll do a um, we'll do a frequently asked questions that we can try to address. You know the details of a lot of the questions and the and the um, and the subtleties of what's being asked. And um, but we so we'll post that information. We really want you. We're really asking you to make sure to go to the Open Town Hall forum to, you know, give us additional feedback, um, take those surveys and answer those questions. It will give us more information. And, you know, it sounds like we have <laughs> we we have a great deal of interest on both sides for this um, facility. And we'll, you know, we want to collect all of your input. We're leaving the Open Town Hall forum open through the end of December so that there's plenty of time, you know, the holidays are coming up. We want to give people plenty of time to be able to go on. It's only about 10 questions or so, but um, you'll also have plenty of other opportunities to provide input. You know, you feel free to contact Christy directly. So we'll collect what we have. We'll circle back with our leadership and just review where we are at this point. And we'll, you know, we'll be back <laughs> with you and making sure that um, we're we're circling back with with the community as we you know as we gather more information and we you know we have some idea of uh, the direction that we're going to go so um, thank you so much for joining us tonight and for all of this great input and I'll um, I'll turn it back to Christy to close the meeting all right, well, thank you, everybody. This has been really great to hear all of your comments and um, and see the information that you have about the park. I hope we'll continue to stay in touch. Um, I know we will continue to stay in touch. So please do feel free to reach out to me again. Um, you're probably more likely to get me immediately via email, um, just given our um, uh, kind of remote work situation right now. So again, feel free to reach out anytime. I'd like to thank everybody who worked so hard behind the scenes tonight to bring this meeting to you. Um, Alex Gear Barayo and Melissa Chotner from Public Affairs and Community Partnerships are producing this evening's meeting. Andrew Sai, our project engineer, is moderating. And our IT team is providing outstanding technical support. Thank you all for coming and good night.